Um, but he does, and it's, I do, um, I do a lot of like personal networking. So like for me, uh, talking to the moms of school yard, volunteering with certain things, that was big for me and my business. Um, so we all do things a little different and he's gonna kind of go into mm -hmm. what has worked for him today. Um, but if the general consensus is that you don't have time, like- You do. It's just in your head. Yeah, that's what our business is. We, we may buy and sell houses, but like really our job is prospecting. Yeah. And like my dad who was in sales and that's what he did, he prospect. Like the first thing he asked me when I talked to my dad, how's business going? It's good. Are you getting prospect? And you know what? Sometimes I'm not that. Mm -hmm. I, have, I don't phone call. I don't do phone calls like he does. Like I have a lot of repeat business and past clients, and I do a lot of like networking with other agents and getting business that way. So I do it a little bit differently. I block off time to do um, volunteer work, and that's what's given me a long time business. That's not the proper way to run it, which is why I'm not teaching this class. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I try to. And there I could really be lots of things I can still switch. I'm really good at coaching people into doing it. Yeah. Because I coach agents and I say, get on the phone, like, you have to do this. So, time, time, time. Mm -hmm. It's an excuse, I know. <laughs> well, it is. It, it, it's a lot different when you're my age and don't have anything better to do than gym, Xbox, and make money. But he called me last year. He called me last year about the offer, and he's like, he's like, sorry, you're clicking all year. I was, I was gaming. I was gaming. So one of the things about prospecting is mindset. So when I talk to people about doing it, it's like if you are feel awkward or yes. about it, it's like our brain tells our body how to move. So if our brain is fighting with us, our body will do it. So when I teach other people how to do it, like my other business, I'm like. Think of it as like, what is your pipeline? How big is your pipeline? Don't worry about getting a yes right now. Mm -hmm. Get yeah. an engagement in your pipeline and then like see if you can grow that. And that mm -hmm. takes a little bit of the pressure of trying to convince somebody that they need to use right now. So all you want to do is be top of mind. Yeah, you yeah. just want to make that relationship, right? You just, you just want to want start out, and make a relationship with them and then build it yeah. until they need you, right? That's it's right. it's their time, not yours. That's right. But you're using your time to build that relationship to make yeah. your way up to that last let's set an appointment right yes music one two three but i'm using my hotspot because apparently it wasn't working this morning so time if you don't have it make find it have something else find it. I'm just gonna see this yeah. Do you think you guys don't? This is going to be very casual. <laughs> it's not. You guys can ask me any questions. I'm going to grab something. And it's harder for some people than others. Like, I'm so low parent with two kids right now. Like, for me to find time to like do that and do everything else that I do, it's harder. Like, I, I'm having a hard time doing that. So I'm trying to make an effort to just use my my drive time as like following up with my people because as equally as important as lead generating is following up mm -hmm. you know, all the time. because once Very you key. that connection if you don't continue that connection then you lose that and i have lost mm -hmm. yeah i had uh, i had a guy call me the other well i called him because he hasn't picked up in like five months he lives in waterloo and he has an agent that's going to be dealing with him in Waterloo, but he wants to get something in Perry Sound. And that's his best, best friend. We'll make this very, very casual. I want you guys to talk more and ask questions. I don't like talking a lot, so you guys can ask a lot of questions. But the man from Waterloo, Waterloo is best friends and agent. And he said he's going to use him for the sell. And I'm going to be doing his buy side in Perry Sound just because I kept following up. He said, you've been in touch with me for two years now. Just calling, following up. Hey, what's going on? What's going on? How are you? And I said, it's my best friend, but you'll get the business because you've been in touch and keeping up with me. So the follow-up is key. Um, but yeah. How do you start your day? Like, how do you know where to start calling, where to start calling, whether you do 
and then say like what what do you prioritize first so yeah um, basically i start my day off with if it's mm, door knocking it's sort of different but my general day looks like get in the office by nine 9 30 i'll start calling 9 30 to 10 is when i'll hop on mojo which is the triple line dialer uh, and i'll start calling from there that's one of my main generations of making business um it looks like that and then i move into basically follow-ups afterwards so it's going from my lead generation to command adding contacts and stuff like that during my like lead generation time i can I can add people while I'm on the phone. Let's say, let's say I get someone that says, yeah, I'm looking to sell in two years. Maybe while I'm talking to them, I'm in, I'm in command, write notes saying, okay, this person does this. What's her family like? Your first interaction isn't really trying to figure out everything. It's just trying to understand them as what they're looking for. And then you get more in depth down the road. Um, if I go into command, I'm not really going to follow the Ignite um, presentation. I'll, I'll go through it, but um, I like more of a Q&A. And for example, so if we go into, I use command for all my tasks and follow-ups. So that's my main, main, I have this open when I'm doing all my calls so I can keep, keep focused on this. For example, if I go into my tasks here and I go to my past due. So for example, what I would do is I do my calling, get that done when I try to hit 20 to 25 new contacts. So people that I've never talked to and they say, are you looking to buy or sell? Yes or no? That's a contact, that's one. So I try to get 20 to 25. I try to aim for 80 to 100 per week. So for example, if I these are all my tasks that I need to take a look at. <clears throat> so for example, John. So John, I haven't spoke to him. I spoke to him uh, six days ago, but I need to follow up with him again. So I go into his profile here and go to the notes. And this is where I keep all my information about John and what he's looking for. So September in 2023, I called him. He's going to Florida. A friend passed away, has a condo. I make the notes very general and based to what I hear. So you guys might not be able to understand what that note says because it's all like mumble jumble. But I can understand from when I spoke to him because I'm just typing as fast as I can while he's talking. So I remember everything. So he wants to go to Perry Sound, really. He doesn't want to drive three. Uh, he doesn't want to drive three to four hours because he lives uh, downtown Toronto. He wants something with waterfront. He has, he can do something that's a fixer upper. Um, spoke to him October 27th. He has a million things on the go. The cottage is taking a downturn. So he's keeping it off to the side for a bit. Made a note call in the new year. Um, he's still looking, uh, Janet, I figured out Janet is his wife. They're looking for cottage property. showed them. I showed them one of their, our, our properties that we had, and, uh, he gave me some feedback on what he was looking for. So it basically wasn't what he was looking for, but it gave me a better understanding. So moral of the story for that is, is your follow-ups and just keeping these notes are very, very key to understanding your your client who could be your potential client right <clears throat> and yeah interrupt whenever just okay. say stop talking so how do you find a reason to, like yeah you have to follow up and like how do you come up with an idea as to like you're like hey are you supposed to like yeah but i'm not ready yeah like, how do you so basically yeah that's a good good question good question when i'm calling john i'll be at the top of this note here i'll be at the Last one I told was March 28th is when we spoke. So has to be something decent got my one home. So basically I've called John. You have to provide him with something of value. So whatever it could be. He's looking for cottages. So it could just be something along, along the lines of, okay, in the past month, cottages in Perry Sound have went down 1%. Something of value to him because he's looking for cottages, right? 
you always have to remember its value, what, what you can offer value to them um, is something. If you just call and say, hey, how's it going, John? What's going on? And it's like, why are you wasting my time, right? It has to be something of value, what you can provide to them. But it could be anything. It could be just general market knowledge. Barry has gone up in the past month this much. Your home might have went up this much, right? So it all depends on what's what's going on. And but it could be you have multiple different ways of putting it. Okay. Yes, correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if it if they're selling, like it's something in their area. What I use all the time is I'll go back for command here. I use one of the smart plans on command, which is um, a monthly neighborhood neighborhood measure. So basically it tells what's going on in the area, like a little radius around their home. Cause usually I can find, if I get their name, <clears throat> I can get their address. And then I put that into command here. Let me get a good, <clears throat> excuse me. Let me get someone good here. Susan, do I have her address? An email. Hey, Drew. Hello. How's it going? So yeah, so I have, I have Susan's email here and I got her home address as well. So basically, hello Chris, come on in. I have this bi-weekly in smart plans of command. This is a very, very useful tool. If you have their email and have their address, um, this bi-weekly neighborhood, neighborhood nurture basically sends them an email every, every two weeks. It's very, very small. It's easy, easy to read, has a picture. Um, it tells them what's going on in like a kilometer radius of their address, what's active, what's sold, average price, number of listings. So a lot of times when I follow up, I say, hey, did you get my bi-weekly email? And they're like, yeah, I loved it. Like it's good, good information to just look at. So if it's a seller, usually I just automatically leave that in there. And, and in smart plans, it'll curate that content for you? Correct. Yeah. I've, let me see. Um, I used to send it up oh, here. I don't know if you, yeah. uh, no. Oh, here it is. <clears throat> this is what it looks like. So yeah. Show us where in smart plans to find them. Yes. Yeah. So neighborhood report for Midhurst. Yeah. Properties for sale. One current. One thirty-two. Average price. One point six. Average price per square foot your average days on my market. And then where his exact property is, it goes in the general vicinity is what's on the market. So you got Glen Huron, you got one on St. Vincent there, you have one on Park Trail. Yeah. And then that's all it is. That's great. Right? So, and that's very easy. It all automatically goes out. And people like and it, it automatically creates the content as well. Like yes. Build no, no, <laughs> no. You just need their email and their address. Okay. And then it takes yeah. email and address. What is the smart plan called? It's the bi weekly neighborhood nurture. So you can do monthly. I have monthly as well. I have two of them. Depending on the time frame or range that I think they're going to sell. Um, yeah. If it's like, hey, we're selling in six months, all right, you're getting a bi weekly. Or address, address, email, you're perfect. You just go to add the smart plan and then search it up. Because I got, see, I got the bi-weekly and then I got the monthly as well. And then you, that's, it's awesome. People love it. It's so easy. You don't have to do anything. It's automatic. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, set yourself up on it and it'll send you one. It's cool. And you can set it when it starts. So if you want it to set like two days from now, yeah. then it'll send it two days from now and then it'll do it every bi-weekly from that. For example. <laughs> See, you can, so you select and then you can select start on a specific date. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. Great so use. That maybe, you know, I have people on that, but I found like condos. Like it's yeah, not, it's like yeah. You'll get it's just very yeah. Any for sale. It's just yeah. very general. Yeah. What's in the area? Yeah. So I just uh, I just let them know. Hey, like this is very general, just to give you an idea. I mean, so exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yes, exactly. You can un- everyone unsubscribes anything like that. So. Mm-hmm. Yep. I have like some people on monthly calls and stuff like that. Yeah. Monthly yeah. touches, yeah. which is so good. Right. Got you. Yep. Yes. Yes. That's basically what all I use command for is tasks and tasks, really. Because I just go, I go to the third one down here on the left, and then I go to my task. Yeah. And then I go to pass do. Yeah. And that's what I should be calling today. Yeah. Like, for example, Rose hasn't picked up since September 27th, and I still call her to this day. (laughs) So, yeah, I keep, uh, for example, this. A lot of these are these top four, 2023, and I still keep in touch with them. No, I don't leave a message. Uh, some people do, depending on who it is. If I have a better relationship with them, I'll leave a message. Yeah. Um, but no, I usually don't send a message. If I have their email, I send an email. Yeah. And I just, I just, like yeah. Text. yeah, yeah. And I, I just don't stop until they pick up, until I have to move that task further down the line, right? So. Um, mm-hmm. yeah, so 80% of sales happens between 5 and 11 contacts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've heard, I've heard that. Yeah. Yeah. By like contact 5, 6, and then. Yeah. I'm like, tell me now. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, I have 20 people past you that I need to. Um, this afternoon. Yeah, so like maybe only five will pick up, right? And then tomorrow will be the same thing. I'm still calling them again until they pick up. So um, due today, and then there's ones that are due today that I have to call. And then you can look at your due in next seven days as well. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I use command as just something to, it keeps me on track. I'm basically a robot. Um, I do lead generation from 9.30 to whatever until I finish my contacts and then after that I'm right to uh, my follow-ups right to my follow-ups so someone says I'm not looking to buy or sell for another two years to get this good because I feel like that's mm-hmm. so much said but that's pipeline no nope. I got a really good example for you so I had a client I got them off our marketing website and they said we're not looking to sell for two to five years that was their original plan. And I was like, okay, no problem. I'll still come out and give you a listing presentation. So I did. And then I set them on a safe search on what they're looking to buy. First house that came up. Can we go see it? Sure, no problem. And the wife goes see it. Okay, I like it. My husband's not around yet. Can we wait till he comes back? Go see it. Husband likes it. Then can we put in an offer? They said two to five years, and this was a week later. So I put their house up for sale and then put an offer in on this property. Didn't work out, but it just shows. You can someone can say two to five years and flip with a switch, it can be two weeks, right? So think of that as think of that as put it in the database and follow up with them. Follow. <laughs> yeah. Usually if they say like year, you split it in half. That's what they say or something like that. So if it was like two years, I would call them every year. Um, I mean, probably if I called them once, I would say, does it make sense if I call you in six months or a year? And then they go, yeah, call me in a year. I usually give them an option. Like if it's not for two years, I'll call them, say, hey, like, how's it going? And then for our next call, do you think I call you in six months or a year? And then they'll tell you. 
and then yeah, in that time, time in the time being like till the next call um not really i mean if i have their if i have their email and i have their their ad address then it'll just do the smart plan every month it sends them the prices in their area right um the other way i follow up with them is if i know what they're looking for then i just do an auto email on bdar or trev do you guys know how to set up um, like the one home, send them auto emails that sends them properties in their yeah. area? Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, command is just for the monthly, bi-weekly email. Yeah, and then Treb or BDAR is for looking to buy. Yeah. Sorry, one home, that's just like the same searches, right? Like yes. Search? Yeah, okay, yeah. I mean, I'm going off topic, but I mean, it's like a mastermind. I mean, just ask whatever. We'll we'll talk about anything. Yeah. So if you go to your Treb here on your auto emails, right? So these are all the people that I've set up on auto emails. So if you go here, you can go to. Uh, results, and this is the properties that it sent them, right? So that's very useful as well, just to follow up with them. It makes it easy, and then they usually reach out to you, oh, we like this property. That's how the people that said two to five years, um, I said, set them up on this, and the first one that got sent to them, can we go see it? Yeah. So command you use to set up just like a general... Uh, monthly, monthly email, email it talks about home prices in your area and then try to use for search for buying yeah yeah well, yeah so looking to buy mm -hmm. um let's see if we'll go a bit on topic here let's see what let's see what ignite's saying <laughs> so it starts with your real estate expert then your lead generation then go into your follow-up then the transaction right and the key money is that gold is in the follow-up is what you're initially looking for. Generate your leads. Uh, today's agenda. Copies of business. This is a good one. Uh, fears and myths. So when I started lead generating door knocking, I did not want to because I did not want my friends seeing me out on the road knocking. I thought that was just like really weird. And like, I didn't want my neighbors seeing me doing that. Like, it's just a weird feeling. You're just walking around, knocking on people's door. Because usually when people come to your doors, it's like, no, get away. Like, don't sell me anything, right? But it's a lot different when you can think of it as giving someone value. If someone says no, like, screw off. And you're, at least you're giving someone value and they don't want to take your value. Like, you can put that on yourself. Like, if you don't want my help, fine. Be that way, right? What do you say when you don't want to so <laughs> yeah usually usually when i'm door knocking it's usually around uh prospecting um circle prospecting the listing i have usually so maybe it just sold usually is it's either just listed or just sold hi my name is brennan hi i always like to it's funny when i cold call i say i live in the area because i talked to sarah this one time and i said okay watch i'm gonna call two people and I'm going to say, my name's Brennan. I'm a local real estate agent. And the other one was, my name's Brennan. I live in the area. I'm a real estate agent. The first person hung up instantly. The other person talked to me when I said I live in the area. And no one's ever asked me, where do you live? So <laughs> usually it's, um, I've been door knocked in a while, but it's, hi, my name's Brennan. Uh, I'm a local real estate agent. Uh, I just sold or listed this property down the road. It sold in seven hours for $10,000 over asking. Have you thought about making a move in the future? It's pretty high demand area. And we've noticed this in the time frame, right? And then usually they're eh, maybe whatever it is, right? Maybe it's two months, I don't know, ASAP, two years. Um, then from there, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get, you're always supposed to try and get a piece of information so you can contact them back. Yes. Um, what I like to usually do is ask them about the monthly new uh, monthly email that goes out. 
yeah, so I noticed that it sold for this, right? And I told them price and then they're like, okay. <laughs> they want to know what's going on in their area. I have a monthly newsletter that talks about home prices in your area. It gets sent out to you once a month and it just tells you what's active, what's sold, price. Oh, okay. And does that go by newspaper? Is what they say? Like, do you just come give it to me? No, it's by email. What's the best email to um, send this to? And they're like, okay. Right. Oh, that's the smart plan. That's, that's the smart plan. plan. That's I just say it's a monthly newsletter that goes out every month and they'll talk to you about home prices in your area. That's usually my go to. Um, really? Yeah. Yeah. With that, hmm. I was thinking you could potentially see what recently sold in the area and say you have a client who likes the neighborhood. And yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, if you don't, I'm like, I'm like, like please yeah, and say, okay. No, yeah, I mean, like, yeah, yeah, I mean, I feel like that's very rare, but you can say, like, hey, I have a client that's looking for this area. They, they have interest in this area. It's not specifically your home. And they have interest in this specific area. It could be, it could yeah. be like maybe, right? And then we looked at it, did some more research into it, whatever it is, right? You do more searching. It's not for them, but right. It's just a, it's a talking point to say. Yeah. Um, Jamie, what do you what do you like to say when you're when you're out door knocking? You you're you're big in door knocking. Yeah. If you don't have anything in the area, a listed or um, a sold or anything like that, I remember when I started out, uh, it was basically on those same lines as "Hi, my name is Brennan. Um, I'm a local real estate agent. Have you thought about?" I kept it very short and simple. Have you thought about making a move in the next coming years? And then they would, they would give me a time frame, and it was two years and then I just basically put them into command. I put the notes in and then I just follow up, follow up, follow up, follow up. And I've had my neighbor down the street, um, I think this was two years ago, I door knocked them in September, kept following up. They said they're gonna sell in a year or so. I kept following up, kept following up, kept following up. They had another agent go out, give them a listing presentation. Then I went out, gave them a listing presentation and they went with me and that was uh, uh, seven months later, right? Yeah. Those are just a couple. My first ever deal was um, cold call. Uh, well, I had an older couple. They had a big home, too much for them. Cold called them. They had three agents out. Um, this was like very, like right when I started, this was probably like two or three weeks in, or maybe a month. And I was like, I just have no clue what I'm doing still. <laughs> so cold call them. They say, yeah, come take a look at the house. They had a couple other agents with us. I brought Andrew. Um, we did a listing presentation. We were the last people to go through, and we got it, right? So. And you used to say, oh, sorry. <laughs> well, I was just going to say that it's what you were asking earlier. Yeah. Um, in terms of, like, if I don't have anything, like, actually in the area. Yeah. Like, what do you when you door knock, it's like, oh, I'm doing an open house here on the weekend. I can make yeah. sure of that. Or if you have a listing in the neighborhood, you can refer to that. Yeah, it's community. good to have something of, to yeah, like, along the lines of. It's not, like... It's yeah. a lot harder when it's just you going out door knocking, saying, "Hey, have you thought about moving?" Or if you can like, provide them, door knocked, um, the streets around where my clients purchased, and I was yes. basically like, uh, "I help them buy new neighbor moving in at the end of the month." If you yeah. like to meet them, I can coordinate. Like, I would love to coordinate that for you guys. By the way, if you know mm -hmm. you're thinking of moving out, I have other people that would be interested in moving into this area it's excellent yeah it's 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 that. all about like the buyer right and you you just had people want this area for a reason obviously they want this home people are interested in homes i just I had someone buy one like, i've already done a bunch of research on mm. you know why people like it and things like that in terms of like <laughs> nothing i will say oh i was just doing some work in the area i was just doing the showing nearby or like just say I was doing some work in the area and I noticed these houses are so nice or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, just a bit about how, like the reason why you're there and what uh, makes their house marketable, right? For their neighborhood. Andrew? Yeah, the only thing I was gonna say is like, if you're starting to think about door knocking, um, it's a numbers game. Mm -hmm. So there's only so many houses. You're looking for the person to say, oh, actually, yeah, 
right? It's your, it's a search for somebody that's going to say, well, actually, yes. And um, the reality is that you're probably going to be able to duck, uh, door knock more doors per hour in a bunch of townhomes or 30 foot lots versus going up to meters where there's 100 foot lots. Mm -hmm. Now your numbers are down. Not only that, but the turnover in that neighborhood is not as good. You're just trying to get business. So, Jamie would be like, where do I door knock? Go knock the door knock, fresh wood and brush wood and all those ones up in Ferndale. You can boom, 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 like that. <laughs> not only for the area, but look up the four most recent souls. Mm -hmm. You've got that, those, hey, did you know your neighbors across the street sold or whatever? Um, you know, this is an area that we're really interested in, in working with people on because, um, you know, it's got a great school or whatever you know about that neighborhood. It, it, like, you don't need a whole lot of, of imagine what could happen in this or what could happen that. The reality is you're looking for somebody to say, well, actually, and all you got to do is knock on the door and it's tight. So if you know something about some others that have been sold, or you know something about the school, or you know something about, you know, um, the average price in this, if you did it in Painswick, or if you did it in whatever, and the time on market is this, they come with something like what Brennan says. Bring value, value you know, to... You, say, you know what, did you know that the average time on market has gone from 45 days earlier this year down to 26? And, um, you know, instead of... 95% of asking now, we're all, all the way up at 97%. We're not going over asking, but if you had any other questions about real estate, then this is my, I'm kind of a local expert. By the way, you know, do you or do you know of, or is anybody in the neighborhood that knows what they can sell? Don't just limit it to that house, too. Yeah. Because sometimes you get the nosy neighbor that knows everybody. Oh, they just had their third kid or you know, whatever. You should knock on this door. Yeah. So and even if they're not home, then you can send them a letter and then. Like, so it, you got to try and be a little bit, you can't just go and knock on doors. You got to kind of have a little bit of a plan. But I would suggest that the neighborhood that you pick is your purposeful. Yeah. Yeah. Be yeah. purposeful about what you're that's picking. Something that, and that's what Brandon has done really well um, over the years. This, he's worked very, very hard and he puts in a lot of time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like that's you said. About 15 deals this year. It's the numbers game, right? You're just, it's no, okay, on to the next, no, on to the next. Um, but speaking about if it's, no, we're not, we're not looking to move. I usually for cold calling, I say, okay, uh, do you know any friends or family that might be looking to move? I haven't gotten any like business from that, but I've had yeses. We have people looking to move and stuff like that. I know of someone and then try and get in touch with them. And in your day to day, are you trying to like, you know, you put them in a command, you add a quarterly check-in yep. call, and that's just something where like, yep, still thinking about it in the future. Yeah, you just keep calling. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah. So just get putting them into command is key. Um, putting them into command tell, key. Tell them about Arthur. How long you have to? How many calls? Oh yeah, Arthur. Um, that was one. I think I, I cold called her. You two years ago, I think cold called her two years ago. I just, I, we put it up back in March, April. Um, but I kept calling her for two, two years, kept staying in touch with her, giving her like little, little tips on getting ready for the market. She's saying, okay, like I want to be sold, closed by June 20th, all sons still in school, this sort of thing. So I just kept keeping in touch with her, kept following up. And then giving her tips was the main thing. She was asking, okay, like, what are some things I can start getting done? That sort of thing. Just giving her little tips every single time I called. She liked that. And then got to the time this year. We went over in February, got her signed up, got uh, helped her out with getting the property ready and sold it in six days, right? So, and she moved out to Windsor and we got a referral as well. So, yeah. Mm, it's it's really just you gotta you gotta stay on top of your follow-ups people uh brooke on our team she's she's really she always has this mindset of saying i don't want to bug people with following up with them but if you provide just say to yourself so you're providing them value what can you provide them that's not bugging them you're giving them whatever it is right i think the main 
thing there is just if, like follow up isn't just a hey, are you ready yet? Yes. It's a, no, it's it's a hey for when you're ready, here's all the stuff I can provide you. Mm -hmm. By the way, how's that going? Yeah. Okay. And then you so always a, yeah, always say it's first. say it's your time, not ours. We're just here to help you when the time comes. I want to be your choice when the time comes. Um, so question back to this whole free house thing, like if you're mm. you know canvassing around that. Um I guess like where like it's just a in my mind it's a disconnect like I've, I'm I'm inviting you to my open house, but now how do I get like your email or something so I can you know get some kind of data from you so I can like I, I, like, I mean, there's like, personally, um, I've <laughs> taken the route of like, like, kind of implying like, if you want to be a nosy neighbor, is like, I'd love to update you on how that's going. Can I get an email and I'll let you know, like, get any offers okay. or things like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you can kind of orient it around the thing that you're right. talking to them about rather yeah. than just, I want your business. Yeah, you know? I know because I hate mm -hmm. that. Like, they yeah. don't want to feel like you're selling. Don't, stuff don't be pushy. It, yeah. it could be a thing of like. And by the way, I've already done all this research on a house very close to you. If you wanted a home evaluation just for your knowledge, I'd love to come by. Blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And then you can kind of take that rather than well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I can talk about that because that means that we trust the rules. We're not supposed Stress to give information as so the framework of evaluation. Yeah. Kind of like a gray area. So yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I have no clue. If I if I studied the Tressa rule book, I would not be doing business. Like I would be, I would be. Really? Yeah. Good for you. Yeah. I'm. I can't do that. I cannot do that. Good for yeah. you. Yeah. yeah. But I do have a couple of listings. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I just I love to talk to you, but I gauge how interested they are in selling when we even get to the price. Mm -hmm. of their That's property. awesome. And if they're really like ready. To be that and like the parents talk about price and then we do the listing agreement at that time. But, mm -hmm. but yeah, for buyers, it's like I, I'd love to shop for you and do some research, but I need to get this agreement. Yeah, yeah that's good for you. i I'm bad at that. I'm terrible because I feel like if I say that they're gonna be like, nope, well, we're not yeah, signing well, nothing. Right. Yeah. I want them to work with me whether they buy now or mm -hmm. six months. So right. I think of like I'd love to do that. This is more of a covering my my yeah. rear end kind of thing. Yeah, if you wanted to saying. cancel this at any point before Absolutely. they can, yeah. yeah. Can I just to cover them, me. Kind of yeah, I just say that you know the rules have changed, and in order for me to do some research mm -hmm. and shop for you, which I would love to be able to show you it's available, I need to get this buyer with representation yeah. agreement. I go through the whole agreement with them, they sign yeah. it, and then I'm like, awesome. But the problem with that is, is I have I have a lot of contracts, and several of them are very unmotivated because they just. Did the contract to to see what was out there. Right. So sometimes you can I found that I'm spending time in the, with the wrong situations. Mm -hmm. Sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like they were interested, and I'm really going to get in contracts on. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, that's that's good for you. That's the way it should be. Like I'm very very bad at that. I'm I'm more so. I take them. I uh, I'm pretty confident if I get in front of someone, I can convert them so i just got a new contract from clients who were shopping with another agent who never got the letter contract oh okay and, they, and i even said you can go back and work with that agent on like mm -hmm. sure. and they said no nope, you were never offered this mm -hmm. so that's yeah. awesome yeah that's yeah. great yeah we put an offer on house this weekend they didn't get it but like hey, you're, Thursday, you're almost there this is it yeah. you're almost there <laughs> yeah. 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 but i like that other agent if he kind of contract yeah right yeah the thing is you like a lot so many buyers don't know they can they they can cancel that like you could like oh you can't but they could they like you more and they're on contract you could like they could cancel that and just well I, 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 I do <laughs> yeah yeah that's obviously you don't want that no. but if they did that just out of the blue and Mm -hmm. yeah yeah 
So I guess, yeah, moving on. Um, I don't have time time to lead generate. Um, this is, everyone can say this, right? Time blocking is huge. And I figured out my main job, if I want to make money, is not doing admin work. <laughs> so focus on lead generation, whatever it is. Um, a lot of people have different schedules and not a lot of people have the same amount of workload. So, I mean, if it's just 10 contacts, right? If it's five, whatever you can do, but stick to, like I said, I'm a robot. Robot. I come in at 9.30 and lead generate till I get my contacts, right? Um, so making that time is, is key. And then making that time afterwards to follow up with the people that need to be follow up with maybe that you could have talked to them a year ago, two years ago. They might be getting ready to sell, right? It's just working your way down that line. I mean, kind of, it depends on how you do it, but I've found that unless I'm doing part of the boring admin work while I'm doing that lead gen, I will yep. do the boring admin work as late as possible. Well, like, if I'm doing cold calling, I'll have my command open to, like, add stuff. Yeah. The door, or otherwise, it's just a little say in this until I like, have, like, an hour. Yeah. yeah. The best, if you, if you get to that point and someone says, yeah, I'm looking, just, yeah, I'm, we might sell in the next two years. Okay. Then I'm straight to command. Um, putting in a note as we speak, um, or if it's just on notepad, and then you put in that, right? Um, how frequently do you follow up? Like, what's your like minimum and maximum days? Like, obviously, it depends. Like, if you have someone says two years, like, in, yeah, so two like, years, I'll follow up with you in a month. Yeah, you know, it's usually depends on what I'm doing. Sometimes, I if it's I send a letter, I when I'm cold call or door knock sometimes, I'll send a letter afterwards with my business cards in it. And then once I send it, two weeks later, I'll follow up and say, did you get them? Yeah, I got them, awesome. All right, well, chat with them a bit more, try and dig in, right? Your board, family, occupation, recreation, dreams, try and just dig into those a little bit. And then from there, just figure out Hey, does him, do you mind if I call you back in six months? Just check in, see how things are. Sure, no problem. So it, it's a question to ask them when you're about to end the call, I would say. Um, if they're two years, maybe a year, every year. And then once, not every year, sorry. You said like, oh, we're not ready to sell now. And the next thing you know, they're selling. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, later. if you get into a conversation, yeah, so if you get into a conversation of, yeah, we're looking to sell in two years. Okay. If you were to sell, where are you going to go? What are you looking for? That's where you get those details. Then I, when I got all those details, I set them up on the TREB, on the TREB auto email, set them with all their criteria, price, location, bedrooms, bathrooms, bungalow, um, acreage, whatever it is, get sent to them. And then they go, hey, Brennan, thanks for that. Do you mind if we see this one? Okay. Mm -hmm. Just to speak on that as well, it kind of like you have to infer from what you're asking them. Like I found, and I'm, I'm kind of building off the way you said, if you ask about what the motivation is for the move or, like, mm -hmm. and, and if you could move. Motivation is or, huge. Like what's holding you back from this move? Not a direct question like that, but if you can figure out that information, it could be a thing of like, well, we just haven't found the right place yet. And mm -hmm. then. Shocker, four weeks later, a thing comes up on the market and you're yeah. ready to go. Like, yeah, motivation is so, key when it comes to yeah. uh, you figuring out their game plan, like mm -hmm. figuring out what it is, their goal. If you if you say to someone, what is your goal? They'll clue in and be like, okay, he's, he's interested in what we want to accomplish with our family, our life, our work, whatever that is, right? Well, that, the reason why I brought what up, is your goal? Like last week. Mm -hmm. I started talking to them. He was like, "Oh, maybe in a year or two. And then I was, and then we asked four questions. Then you know, within a week, I'm already sending him properties to look over. Like, it's you know, it's all about asking questions mm -hmm. and just getting yep. them to talk about themselves." Yeah, from a good example is that I had a realtor.ca lead come to one of my properties. They didn't, they liked my property, but it wasn't for them. And then I sent them some afterwards, and then they said, "Hey, can we go look at these?" And then they didn't see what they like there, but they're they're looking to move. So I'm now selling their place and helping them buy. So 
that was just a quick turnaround and I met them two weeks ago. So, um, uh, yeah, so time blocking and trying to make that time is key. Um, sticking to a schedule, just a routine, right? Having an, uh, a partner to keep you accountable for that is awesome as well. Um, just saying, hey, like every day, make sure, check in. Have you done your 10 calls, 10 contacts? Yes. Part of it, it's a two second mindset thing about that is um, it's very, very difficult when you're starting and the pipeline's low, or you know, you're, you don't know sort of where your business is going to come from. And we know that your activity today shows up three months from now. Right? And this business mm -hmm. is very much the effort and the reward are not not they connect. No. Not at all. And so what you have to know is your job and all you can control in this business is what you do. So if you if you time block and you do meet your number of contacts and your number of database ads in that day, you should go home feeling great. I mm -hmm. did my job. It is a very and good and feeling. Other stuff will come sprinkling in, but reward yourself to feel mm -hmm. successful. Mm -hmm. and, and have a have a thing that like Brennan has on his wall. He writes down how many he did that day. He writes down how many he did that day. Mm -hmm. and he reports at the end of the week that he, he made his weekly goal. Mm -hmm. And so every day he's feeling good about what he's doing, regardless of whether he does a deal or not. Yeah. And it if sucks. Those, come, right? those will come down there. Yeah. But if, if you don't if you mess this part up, they'll never appear. Yeah. And that's the difference between life and death. Yeah, it is. Exactly. And it sucks. You're just sitting on the phone calling, right? And it's like you, you're not getting paid for any of that. And but it comes. It all came to me at once. It was literally February. Like I had five or six properties go up in the in that month or March. It all came at once. It just and that's from calling a year ago. Um, that's a year long discipline for them to show up. Yeah. So it's, that's the thing people don't get. Mm -hmm. You got to stay stay with it and stick to it. And make those calls, even if it's daunting and tiring, but it's it's gonna it's gonna come. You just gotta stick to your to your focus and what that is, and it'll show up. Mm -hmm. So here in the office, though, like we have to pay for the do not call list. Is that right? Um. Like, how does that work? So I use. No. I use this thing called yeah, telelisting. Yeah, telelisting. Yeah, telelisting. So when I'm cold calling, I use this thing called telelisting. It's basically a map of Barry. Sorry, not a map of Barry, but a map of everywhere. And you can pick. Excuse me. Just like a search on. on Just like a search on Treb. Select area and pull all the numbers from that area. Mm -hmm. So you can go on to tell listing. And you can pick a specific area you want to do. So for example, my where I live. Right? So you map it out. So I just mapped out that area. You scroll down. And it gives you all these phone numbers, people that still have landlines. The red ones are the do not call list. All you do is you go up here and you hide the do not call. And then it comes up with who you can call. And there's 35 people in that little area that have um, landlines. Mm -hmm. And then... You don't need a triple line dialer. That's a $400 deal for the whole year. Yeah. The yeah. triple line dialer is only 139 bucks a month. But it'll, it'll sit there and do that for you. So in an hour... You'll talk to 10 people instead of single up doing it manually like you talked to four. Yeah. So that it manages the numbers for you so that you get. Yeah. So basically, this, what I can do from here, there's this thing called Mojo. Mojo is where I do my cold calling. So it basically, you use your phone, you dial into a call center, and then it uses your number and it calls three people at once. So it'll call in that area, three people at once. One person picks up, you talk to them. If two people pick up at the same time, it leaves a voice message that I automatically recorded. 
saying we have a bad connection, I'll call you after. So the person I'm talking to, once I hang up, it'll call back the person that picked up while I'm on the phone. So that's where, I mean, it, it is daunting when it comes to cold calling. If you're doing one person at a time, that like, there are some days where to get 20 contacts, it ta it's taken me three hours. That's with triple line dialer, so. Um, yeah, so basically this telelisting, I can export this to Mojo, that area, these numbers. I go over to my data and dialer. I go over to, so this was Stone Manor, uh, Midhurst. I made a big spring water, right? And then this is all the numbers that come up and it starts calling them once I, once I have, so I go into the power dialer and then you just log in and it starts calling. And that's how I do my cold calling. And then I just go from there. If someone says, I go, hi, my name's Brennan. I live in the area. Um, I'm a local real estate agent. Um, sometimes I'll, if I'm lazy, which I usually am, I don't, I will like circle prospect. I've sold a house. I just sold a house on Brian Drive. So I will put my area on telelisting around Brian Drive and call those people. Hey, I just sold one on Brian Drive. Have you thought about making a move? Uh, it's a very high demand for this area, right? And then whatever it is, I, two years. Yeah, we're thinking about it. I try to get their email so I can send them a monthly newsletter report. Um, I already have their phone number because it's a landline. So sometimes when I call back to follow up, I'll try and get maybe a cell number afterwards. Um, is there any programs that can capture cell phone numbers? Like, I'm not like sure. Kind of, yeah. You know? Yeah. See, for like these are all the landlines. If you look here, these yeah, are all landlines. I hope someone's working on that because like landlines are soon off. Yeah, they're going to be gone, gone soon. All the time. <laughs> Oh yeah. It's from when you're like advertising. Yes. Yeah, so when you online, like if you answer an ad on Facebook, if you were to put that real estate ads on Facebook, you can retrieve people's phone numbers that they've signed up with. Mm -hmm. So typically to get cell phone numbers, you can only do it where they put it in themselves. Okay. Otherwise it's not really registered anymore. Yeah. Uh, but when like, you know, Somebody gets signs up to a sketchy newsletter or something like that, and then their email, their phone number gets sent out to a bunch of people. Yeah. That's where you get like all those spam calls from, where it's like, "Hello, this is the oh, government of Canada." Yeah. 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 It's interesting the the lead gen. The reason why it works so well for me and Brennan and the Five Points group is who has a landline anymore? Older people, older people, right? So that my jam. I go out and I, I downsize people. Yeah. Oh, you're 60, yes. under 60 as well. Although right. now, I mean, some of them are making it to the end of your career deal. True. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but so, so, you know, you're, you're sorry. You just you know, know, you're, prospect, <laughs> you're prospecting determines what your, what your clientele is going to be. So yeah. maybe, you know, cold calling. And then also, maybe it's door knocking. Or maybe your lead gen could be networking through something like you have a passion for, like maybe you go to Chamber of Commerce or you go to a BNI group or you go to a, I know Jennifer Holmes, she has, uh, she calls them her homies. And it's a group of ladies that they monthly, she'll say, okay, we're going to Donnelly's this night or we're going to go to this paint a mug thing or a, artwork or whatever they decide to do on a monthly basis for fun there's about 30 of them and they, and they all kind of they're a huge referral source for her like you can create it yourself and there's so many different things that you can do that but to be intentional about it i think and have a plan is is important and um, the cold calls really do work they do. Um, again it's a numbers game and um you know brennan and if you think of those cold calls that you've got, most of them are sort of in their 50s anyway, right? Yeah, and um, yeah, a lot of my clients are like 50 to 60 and older. Yeah. Um, I'm very, it's, I've had maybe a couple in their like and, 30s. And then the same stuff is random. Yeah. They're all over the map. Mm -hmm. There's some wires, you get, yeah. So that's why it's important to kind of cast your net over everything. Um, Sync is sort of the online thing that we, that we have, but um, 
Yeah, what, what is that? Like, sure. it's, a, um, it's like Agent Locator or some of these other sites. This is our website. So this is our website. It's the Simcoe County Home Guide. And so people can sign up and look at properties, right? Um, and then when they sign up, it comes in our, into our database that they were looking at properties, for example, this last person. Michelle Botherton, phone number, email, registered 15 hours ago. They were looking at her in Aurelia. Their time frames 12 to 24 months. Um, they fill all that in. They put all that in when they sign up. And then basically I go in and call and say, hi, my name is Brennan. I'm calling from the Simcoe County Home Guide. I noticed you're looking at some properties in Aurelia. Have you thought about making a move? Eh. And then they say, no, we're just browsing. Okay, what's prompting you to browse? There's a reason you're looking. It's not just, right? And then they start to go into a detail. But yeah, so that's another way of lead generation that the other we thing use. Is individual agents do <coughs> different types of sell, they'll put a Facebook ad and then boost it. Drew does boosted ads for yep. the mortgage business all the time, and he can spend $20 to $100. Yeah. And then you through get, Facebook, yeah. they, they respond to you. And, mm -hmm. and that's basically what that is. Yeah. It's because we spend five seven hundred dollars a month. And it goes out it to goes Facebook. Out, you know, and then people, people, it'll, it'll, it'll be an ad that says, "Are you looking to buy a home in Simcoe County?" Click here. Yeah. It's not. It's not you know a specific listing or anything. Mm -hmm. Well, we do that as well. So oh, yeah, the way it actually works is when you Google something, the top three results are it says sponsored. Mm -hmm. uh, we rate our website to in, contain a ton of keywords for around Simcoe County, like the name is Simcoe County Home Guide. Yeah. So yeah. like. Whenever somebody's looking up houses around here, there's a good chance that our our website will come up as the top three, and then it works as like a house sigma or something like that. Mm -hmm. After a few clicks, clicks, it'll be like, "Hey, sign up, like name, number, email, and then like a short questionnaire of like, what's your timeline? Why are you looking? And then we get all of that info as leads, mm -hmm. and it's like generated. The other part that our budget goes into any house that's featured on our website which typically are listings or like listings that we're working with other agents with on uh we'll feature it and then a bunch of our budget is going towards facebook ads that are automatically generated by the website where it's like click here to look at this listing and then it'll direct back to our website and then we get the Mm -hmm. You guys find that a good thing that's been a useful resource? It's yeah, so hit and miss, like he said, like it can be like somebody signs up as like, don't talk to me, don't talk to me. That's yeah, it's, and then it definitely is like, hit and miss. I'm trying to sell my house right now. Right. So it can be yeah. super quiet. Yeah, like a lot of my deals this year have been from the website. The one people that said they're two to five years were from the website. So uh let's see i don't know what to say um i mean that's just scripting and stuff like that i don't like scripts i don't know if anyone else does scripts here i'm just basically like low as you go um because if i try to stick to a script and i mess up one word then i'll fumble the whole thing and i'll stop in my tracks so i kind of just stick to flow as you go i have the same kind of thing it's hi my name is brennan i live in the area i'm a local real estate agent have you thought about making a move in the next coming years? And then, excuse me, yes or no? I have yes, we thought in two years, and then that's where the follow up. It's literally the same thing every single time. It's very, very simple and easy to um, do. Um, I'm afraid of making mistakes. Huh. <laughs> this happens all the time. <laughs> like, this, this, is, uh, this happens all the time. Um, it's just you always have to think of you're you're providing them value, you're providing them your knowledge, right? And if they don't want it, they don't want it. Um, like I said, making mistakes, I fumble so many words and stuff like that, and it happens, right? But you only get better from practice, so that's the best thing that happens for scripting. I think is just doing it, and then you put your foot in your mouth and. Inevitably, like you say a weird thing or like mm -hmm. you imply something that they are adamantly against or whatever, <laughs> and you just have to talk through it. And then like yeah. if they don't like it, there's another door 12 feet away, you know? It's it's one of those things. Yeah. yeah. See for me, like I said, I'm lazy. Yeah. Yes. You definitely have to. And like those negative beliefs too, like I don't know if you experience this, but like I'll do oh, I'm for like an hour. Big on that. And then for some reason I'll just be like, I don't know if I want to like actually door knock this door. Yep, I do. Nothing. 
Yeah. Like, oh, I don't like the way that the I don't like my the lights yeah. on, whatever, a little excuse. But you just gotta work through it. Yeah, like my friends' homes, like when I door knock my area, I don't knock on my friends' doors. Or my court that I live in, I do not knock on their doors. I think that would be much, way too awkward. I cannot do it. I cannot do it. Funny, but yeah, to touch on that, I mean, not funny, I was disappointed in myself, but I made up these flyers and I was going to do my area. Yeah. And I head out and it was like two flyers ago, sunny day, beautiful. I yeah. swear everyone was out cutting their lawns. Yeah. And I kind they of just looped around and I'm like, I can't do this. And yeah. I didn't do it. Like, I got in my car and sat and just drove to different areas. And I, mm -hmm. I still didn't like officially do or not, but I just kind of left my flyers there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you just, it's, I don't know, I, I had those at the start too, I still do, um, but you have to just think past it, like, if I, if this person says to me they're selling in a year, this could be $10,000, I know, right? right, like, it could be this much money, always think about that, even if it's the worst thing, because it's, if you're just thinking about money, but think about it, how daunting this task is, how terrible it is, but if they say yes, or whatever, your friends are laughing at you because you're going door knocking. Well, hey, if I get this house, it's ten thousand dollars in my pocket. Yeah. Okay. So. And every no brings you closer to the yes. Correct. Correct. Yeah. I'm. When I started, I I did not want a door knock. I didn't want one. My, my friends seen me. No one. None of that. I don't like it. I never thought I would door knock in my life. I didn't know real estate. You had to door knock. <laughs> or cold call. Sorry, sorry. I thought I was glitz and glam. Do we <laughs> like selling. I thought I was going to be in selling sense. Yeah. Selling very uh, Ontario, yeah. but it didn't no, turn did. out to be that. Um, uh, uh, but I think knocking in your neighborhood is a good start. Oh yeah, I do it all the time. You know them, and you can just like it's you're not really going in there to sell anything. It's yeah. Just like, okay, just so you know. I'm in real estate. Like, yeah, I'm just my business card. If you guys and, want, you kind of know them, but you don't know them. So, so it's like a good practice, and you don't really have to have a script. You're just introducing yourself. Yeah. yeah. And then it just goes from there. And then when you do the next house, I feel like with every house, it just gets easier. Yeah, I haven't done it. So, yeah. No, I, I get that. It's so really, it's I'm really thinking. easy if you go with a partner. Like, yeah. I am lazy. Like I said, I'm lazy. That's why I cold call. I come here and sit on my behind and cold call for a long time because it's so much easier than door knocking. And you're getting sweaty. It's 30 degrees out. You're hungry. You have to go stop, do something. I eat every 30 minutes, so door knocking is terrible for me. I bring like <laughs> snacks in my pocket. Um, or, or Drew, or I don't know what it is, he has the worst luck. Every single time he goes door knocking, at least once, he'll be halfway up the driveway and they pull in behind him. Oh, yeah. yeah I, it's like the most, it's the most awkward. awkward. You just like you have to stand there and wait yeah. for him to get out of your car. Oh, like, oh, yeah. Hey, I'm already at your house. It's so terrible. Like, you, and that's one of those things you just kind of have to laugh off. Yeah. It's like that was the most awkward thing ever. It yeah. happens all the time, but it was like kind of funny. It's like, okay. Oh, yeah. It's like, yeah. It's like, if that's the worst part that's happened to your day, like, that's pretty funny. I don't mm -hmm. know. But uh, and it really is, and even that bad, you know, like we get so. I mean, I know I get so in my in my own mind. Mm -hmm. Getting getting in your own mind is the is the biggest thing. Yeah. Um, having someone to go with is so much easier than going by yourself. Because if you see someone else doing it, you want to do it. So I need to get back out there because I said I would. So I'm gonna probably try and get one of them people uh -huh. out there. Yeah. <clears throat> But door knocking is definitely, I would say, better than cold calling. Yeah. 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 And it's just it's accountability. Accountability. Yeah. yeah. It's more fun. Like, yeah, it's just it's really hard to get another person there. Sure. And if someone is good to you, you guys can like laugh it off. Oh, I. If someone's if someone's rudely. You can get oh, yeah. instant validation of like that was wild. Maybe yeah. like, yeah, I heard that. Or, oh, yeah. Yeah. No, That's it's for sure. like it's very very rare you'll get people like slamming the door. Yeah, or, like you'll get multiple hours that might happen. Like, like less than a year. I've had people yeah. just call me and just say like well, stop calling me screw off like that's a, i just laugh i think it's funny and even then like if that's the case i'll tell them about the do not call list and instantly they're like i did not know about that thank you so much yeah. and they're like thankful that they yeah yeah and yeah it's like a thing of like like even though i'm never gonna hear from them again it's like yeah i'm never gonna hear from them again yeah. they just save me so much time like you know there's always a positive 
Yeah. So. For sure. Yeah, it comes to it. No, just thinking about you gotta you gotta look past that. And door knocking is door knock is awesome. Like you're face to face instead of a call over the phone. They don't know who you are, what you look like, how your personality is. Exactly. The other thing too is like we talk about Mets. You've heard about that before. Mets is somebody who you physically met, mm -hmm. and the level of the relationship is so much higher than a voice over the phone or an yeah. email. Right. Body now language. You have a now you have body language. Now you have a, a real connection, right? Mm -hmm. So the, the door knocking is just great for that. Yeah, it's awesome. You, you just went from here to here because now they know what you look like, what you sound like, mm -hmm. and how you act. How you yeah. Hold yourself. How you? Uh, you're kind. So you're caring. Yes. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. No. No. Not yeah, get in your head, right? yeah. yeah, exactly. Of all these scenarios. Yeah. It's like a psycho killer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I've I've had <laughs> Yeah, I've I've had so many people uh I've had so many people tell me come in. Yeah, I've had uh I've been door knocked many times and I've had I've been in multiple homes. Oh yeah, great. Right Fair enough. You're yeah. Girl Fair enough. Like, yeah. No, that's why you should be. Right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah that's so or you just say no. I'll come back in. Like yeah. I'll come back in two hours. Like and you bring some with you or something. Yeah. yeah. I'll come back yeah. later tonight. Like or whatever it is. I'll come back. You just say yeah. I'll come back and just bring someone with you. Yes. Yeah. I'm on a roll right now. I don't. I want to. My goal is to get this done. If you tell someone your goal is to get this done, they're like, okay, hey, this guy's motivated, and they're gonna mm -hmm. be like, whoa, he's got effort he's going to put this in right and if they see that and say i i'm going to finish these doors and then when i'm done that i'll come back yeah right? they'll they'll see that you're putting in effort and that's something yeah, they yeah especially like <clears throat> i don't know at, at least once a time when you go out door knocking and it like motivates me to power through i don't like you answer you get an mm -hmm. answer even though most of the time it's a no i find that like senior people are like more like more elderly people i guess it's because i'm younger but they're always like i really respect that you're out here doing it they love like, it blah 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 they like, love it and it's always like yeah like i am yeah, like, yeah. Like, it, even though it's like they're not like they're not interested like i'm i'm here for the rest of my life I don't want to move. yeah but but they respect the that you're out there that. or like i used to be a real estate agent and, like i hated that <laughs> it's always just like validated you know? yeah i did a another example of that i had a, i did a cold call last week and that individual was in sales his life as well and i cold called him and um we established a great relationship he's like you know what like you doing this that's good good on you because that it takes a lot of guts to get on the phone and start cold calling is that and i we made such a great connection and uh, got like a 1.7 million dollar house he lives in. <laughs> so remember tom angel who owns Four brokerages, mm -hmm. including ours. Um, he started in door knocking, but he went back basically back to zero in the financial crisis in the, in the 80s and whatever. So, as a 50 year old, he started over again. We probably will tell you the story if you haven't heard before. But he built his entire business from door knocking. He did uh, two hours of door knocking every day for, and regardless of the weather um for years and years and years and years and years and look at what his family has in terms of wealth and mm -hmm. giving back to the community and we got the cottage in Skokia and we have the place in Florida that they all internationally it is yeah. wildly successful from Dorna and be consistent yeah consistency is like the key and what I get from a lot of my clients is like you never gave up on calling me and that's how I got their business the first ever cold call that I got. He, I remember, I'll always remember this. He said, you little bugger, you call me every two weeks. And you wouldn't give up. And I was like, yeah. And he, then I set the appointment and got out and we got it. And I'll always remember that. He said, you little bugger. You never stop calling. So it's all about just like persistence and consistency. Um, but yeah, and lead generation never ends, right? If you stop, um, for example, when I had that, so many deals that randomly came up in the from years ago um 
I stopped all my lead generation, stopped it for like probably three weeks, three, four weeks, right? And that you'll get like a law in your business because that when you stop for those three weeks, that's going to be a year down the road, but that's when the business, you're not going to see it, right? So it's the best when it's time blocked. Yes, just make sure you're time blocking your lead generation time. If it's, for example, door knocking, I have cards I need to bring out because I just sold, I sold a property over by Eastview and I'm going to door knock there. Like I just sold it, sold in seven days. Have you guys thought about moving? I still need to get out there. So I need to time block this week, a time for me to go out and say, I am doing this. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so. Um, any questions while I'm just sifting through what I can... Yeah, I guess your sphere of influence is just who you know in your phone. They always talk about how many contacts are in your phone, times it by a certain number, something like that. And that could be five deals just sitting there of maybe exactly your contacts or someone they know, right? It's not the exact contact in your phone, but they might know someone that way. Um, so reaching out to your sphere of influence is definitely um, big. For me, and not so much. I'm 25. I don't, my friends aren't buying a house. So it's a lot different for my sphere of influence. Um, but definitely when I get in the next, but it, I should still be reaching out to them. So I'm their choice when it comes to that time, right? They know I'm doing business. They know I'm selling homes, right? They, know people. <clears throat> they might know people. It doesn't stop at that one person. It keeps going, right? That person might know someone that they might know someone. Right. So always, always, whatever you're doing, it could be anything. I remember one time I was playing hockey and I asked the ref during the game <laughs> if he's like looking to buy or sell or something like that. And I was very new to the business at the time. And he said, yeah, I was thinking about it, but I didn't know what was going on at the time and stuff like that. So, but just asking people wherever you are, it could be anywhere, right? There could be something just under the works of whatever it is, right? Uh, if you do any sports, any programs, groups, anything like that. I get business from social media, and I'm no good, to, good for you, really. All, I've never, I, I would like to, tips I would like to get business from social media. All the time. Oh. Huh. Here's a contract. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Huh. And is that Instagram or? No, mostly Facebook is where I okay. build it. Yeah, I don't have like thousands of followers, but I just constantly produce content that is high value. I don't ask for sales in my posts. Right. I share, you know, kind of the day to day stuff in my stories. And I just daily, I get messages from people. Yeah. And for social media, you're supposed to keep it. It's supposed to be 80, 80, 20 is 80% personal. 20% is your business, but I'm terrible at that. And I just do hundred percent business because I don't I feel Instagram like posting about mine. Mm -hmm. Instagram tends to be people promoting their businesses. Correct. Facebook tends to be a little bit, but I've always used Facebook. Mm -hmm. for my business. Yeah. No. And whenever I post on Instagram about real estate i have it linked with my um real estate page on facebook so it it automatically puts it yeah. yeah and then i share it on my personal as well my personal facebook and, I, that's the smart thing. and I should keep share I should, yeah because unless you're spending a lot of money on <coughs> advertising you don't want to still probably work for facebook yes like exactly uh, i should just share it right to my personal share it to your personal yeah mm -hmm. soi soi The thing that people don't do, I think, if you learn it well in this business is expect or be intentional about where you spend your money, have them spend their money with you. So does your hairdresser know you're a real estate agent? Yeah, I got two, I got two deals from my hairdresser. What's the hairdresser? It wasn't even the hairdresser, actually. Sorry, not my hairdresser. It was the front desk worker. She overheard me talking about real estate to my hairdresser, and then she 
pulled me aside and said, can I talk to you after? Yeah. And that led to me selling their condo and buying uh, a home. Yeah, like, the importance of just having conversations, right? That's yeah, it. Yes. And just, you know, if you're going to recommend a painter or, mm -hmm. or an electrician or a mover or whatever, it's not, it's totally fair to say, hey, like, I'm recommending you. What are the chances that you recommend me? Mm -hmm. and yeah. Just find out. Like, it's important for them to say, no, well, I have my brother in law and I send everything there or whatever. But mm -hmm. like, you don't get it if you don't ask. They say, the, sure. the, uh, the open mouth gets fed, right? So yep. don't be don't be a secret agent everywhere you go. Be like, and then it can come from oh man, you should have seen this listing I saw the other day. Yeah, the view like anything like know, that. I'm about to put one on from a, a cottage I was at yesterday where I took this stupid little video in a in a on a sauna. <laughs> Check out the sauna. I'm sitting in my suit in the That's sauna. That's so cool. The view. Yeah, but. It just like that activates your spirit, right? Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have to be real. Like you can talk if you usually talk about someone else's. If you meet someone, you talk about, hey, what do you do? They're obviously going to say, what do you do? Yeah, that's <laughs> what Sarah's the master. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she would wear a real estate shirt on the on the school ground when she's picking up her kids. And yeah, ask people what they do. Yeah, they yeah. Well, them. she wouldn't just wear a, a real estate jacket. She'd wear like a corny. Yeah, I sell like, homes. You have to come up and ask, and then it's like you're tricking them and talking. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, just something uh, um, along the lines of that. <laughs> yep, mindset, time blocking, and mindset. If you if you have it, have it time blocked, and say I'm going to do this, and have someone tell you you're going to do it. Like Jamie, if I don't cold call ten people today, tell me like, hey, why didn't you do it? I think it's also like, and it makes good for that too. But if you agree, like we're gonna do ten. If you say you're gonna do well, something, do if it. They do it, and you don't. You're like ah, oh. so you you get yeah. competitive kind of thing. Like I'm a pretty competitive guy, so that stuff mm -hmm. really motivates me. Um, or at least like setting a goal and then like trying to meet it. You know? mm -hmm. Yeah, so and just setting your goal for the week. So on Monday, I set my goal depending on what I have planned for the week. If it's eighty contacts, a hundred contacts. My general is I try to do 80 contacts, whatever it is. Cold, yeah. <clears throat> if it's cold call, door knock, website, sphere of influence. And contacts is what? Yes or no? They said yes or no to me. Uh, you actually have a just a real yeah. 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 It's not 20 calls, it's 20 conversations. Yeah. Hey, and you looking by yourself? No, that's that's conversation. Yeah. That's one right there. Like, as you were saying last week, it completely depends on them how fast that is. Like last, I think at the start of the month, I got 120 conversations in a week, mm -hmm. and then like two, it took twice as long to get seven. Like, yeah, and it totally depends on what time you're doing it, what you're doing, like door knocking. If you're doing, like you said, houses that are farther apart. It's a lot more longer to make the same amount of contacts, right? So mm -hmm. yeah. really time block is just part of it. Yeah. And um, yeah, like I tried setting your goal is key. I try to do 80 contacts a week and then try to get five database ads. So five people that said, Yeah, we're looking to make a move in the next little bit or whatever it is. So keeping the goal, setting it and just sticking to it is is definitely the way you will get your business. And then your follow-ups. Don't forget your follow-ups. They are the the money is in the follow-up because at that initial, once in a blue, you're not gonna maybe once in five years someone's gonna say, yeah, we're looking to sell right off the phone, right? It doesn't get to the the follow-up is where you're gonna get that sale down the line. Database is your business. Your database is your business. Building up the number of names in it and relationship with those names is really the very core of what building real estate business is all about. That's like I said, when you're getting my database ads, <laughs> every week I'm trying to get five new people to put in my database. I started off with, I think, 200. Let's see how many I'm at now. I started off with 200 when I, and now I'm at 446. So I've added 246 people since I've started. Wow, that's 
Um, um, and you figure everybody moves every seven years. Yeah, if you have mm -hmm. seven people in your database, you should have, you know, somebody moving every year. If you have 70, you have 10, if you have 140, mm -hmm. you have 20, if you have 340, you have 40 deals a year. If you have 40 deals a year, <laughs> that's a lot of money. Right? Yeah, that's insane. That's a lot of money. Yeah. But these are people that 100% will only deal with you. and you're doing a great job of communicating with them. And I don't think your 200 and whatever your database is, mm -hmm. is that, mm -hmm. but there's probably a good 40 or 50 of them that are. Yep. So you're guaranteed yep. just waking up in the morning that you're going to make now, you're going to make six figures mm -hmm. in this business. Yep. You've got a, that solid many numbers. a solid hundred. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've gone last year. I probably had, four or five, I called follow-ups and called, and, hey, we're listed, right? It's terrible. I was like, but that, what I told myself is, all right, I got to find another one now, right? You don't just let yourself, I lost out. I just lost out on another one today, actually. They just signed with another realtor and we didn't get to present. They said they're going to have us out, but now, now my job is to go find another one, right? So. A lot of this stuff I don't really understand. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the four laws of a database. So you build your database, doing your lead generation, <clears throat> feed it every day, communicate, which is your follow follow up, and then when you're following up, you're giving them value, giving them service, right? <laughs> um testimonies and reviews go a long way i don't know if you guys when i'm doing um listening presentations and stuff like that um, for buys leases i always say if i if i do a good transaction for you and it goes smoothly do you mind if you give me a google review or yeah no problem it's the easiest thing ever and once you accomplish their goal of making that move they buy a house everything's firm you ask them that the same day because they're feeling excited Oh, we just, we got, congratulations, like you got your new home. Now that everything happened, do you mind, whatever it is, how you, how you want to word it yourself, um, do you mind leaving me a Google review, right? Those are, those are awesome. So I, um, it's really great to have those and trying to advertise those as much as possible is key. So I make posts, uh, Instagram posts out of all my testimonials and reviews whenever I get a new one. I take it, put it in a Canva and post those on Instagram and it shows, right? Like it shows that this is the service that people are getting when they work with you. <laughs> Golf. Yeah, I don't really do any of these like, um, my main command smart plan is that monthly newsletter. That's the best one. It's, the, it's easy. It's You don't have to do anything else. It's automatic. And everyone likes it because they want to know what's going on for value around the property. So I don't do all these other specific like phone call ones and stuff like that. I just make a task to remember to call. Uh, I feel like there's just a lot of stuff in here that you don't really need. Um, it's a lot easier to understand. I guess that's the last one. Yeah, that might be the last one. Um, it's better to come from like examples and stuff like that because then you can take it into account for like real life stuff. Any questions? Anyone have any questions or anything like that about cold calling? I mean, uh, what else? I got this little. Um, oh, open houses. I'll talk about open houses a little bit. Open houses are great for getting um, new leads, um, new buyers, right? Um, a lot of people, let's say your property is conditionally sold. If you do a conditionally sold open house, those are great as well because you, um, first person comes in the door, 
sorry, we're conditionally sold because they can't see that on Realtor. And 99% of people that come to open houses find it on Realtor because you post it on the boards. They will come in, don't know it's conditionally sold. You let them know, hey, it's conditionally sold, but I have three others um, in the area um, that are comparable to this. Maybe we can set up a time and I can show you privately so you don't have to wait for these open houses. It's one key. Um, what else? What else? Open houses. Uh, I usually don't bring information about the house with me um, because. You never use any bags. I do that thing. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, do you have a thing about, do you have any information on the home? Yeah, what's your email? I can send it over to you. We'll be texting you right now. Yeah, I can send it over. So I don't bring any anything really with me uh, to open the ha open houses, um, just because if they want information, I will get your email to send it to you. Um, we do uh, like okay. sign in sheets, I, yeah, stuff like that. I like to do that. <laughs> three or four houses that are close by that are in the same price range. And um, we've had some success where somebody's come in that's unrepresented and book them a showing that same afternoon at a different house. Mm -hmm. yep. And then they're on the buyer rep and they're on trust and they go on there. So mm -hmm. at, at, at the very least, you know what the competition is immediately so that you can validate that this is the best deal or or show them, you know, your market knowledge and just more things to talk about, but more about information about other houses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's always a great, great thing to do. Bring comparables to that are in the area. Um, yeah, we do our open house sign in sheets. So they put in their information, stuff like that. So we have it afterwards to follow up with them. Maybe if it's not this house, it's another house that they're going to look for. And then you can help them find that one. Um, what else? What else? Mm, yeah, uh, open houses are great. I mean, I've done um, deals and that snowballed into maybe four or five just from open houses and stuff like that. Right. So, yeah, I don't know. Do you have any questions about open houses? Do you guys have any special tips that you guys do with open houses? Anything like that? No. Um, I mean, it's, it's totally dependent on them. I feel like I, it's one of those dances that you got to do in real estate where it's like, you want to give them info about the house, but you don't want to also be on their heels, breaking down their neck the whole time they're looking through the house. Yeah. I always, uh, I always, some, usually I ask them or sometimes I'll tour with them cause I'll show her, I'll tour with them and then I'll, I'll back off and I'll let them tour their house by themselves. Cause you want to let them feel. Um, how it is if they were going to live there, right? Um, that's one thing I like to do with showings as well. Like I do a tour with them and then I'll back off and I'll say, you do your, you go look around because you are, you have to feel how it is with someone, your family, right? Not just your agent right behind you. Um, yeah. I don't know. Any other questions about cold calling, door knocking, open houses, follow-ups? Just gotta be robotic. <laughs> Just be robotic. Stick to your stick to your cold calling, door knocking, or online marketing for that first little bit of the day. Once you hit those, it feels good. It definitely does feel good. I still get like, yes, I got I got my contacts done. I can stop. Um, I think the biggest thing for me for um, lead gen is tracking. If I'm not tracking it, it won't have anything. So I won't do anything after that. Like, unless I'm putting it into my spreadsheet that I'm logging how many I'm doing, or I'll have a checkbox that I'm going to mm -hmm. check off once I've done the thing that I said I was going to do, like, I'll just door knock that door, talk to them, and then walk away and completely forget about it. Like, yeah. I need to have something that I have to do next. And then, like, mm -hmm. and yeah, I find having a spreadsheet that tallies as it goes really helps me because it's like, wow, I've done so much. Mm -hmm. kind of thing. Yeah. No, that's a good idea as well. Um, <laughs> You know, you think about you started in bold your first week in the business. You started in bold your first week in the business. Mm -hmm. And then wanting to make 100 contacts a week, a week as a rookie. As a rookie. And you're in there. And you get a pin if you do 100 in a day. Yeah, I got that. And you get I got that. And if you get 100, and if you get the bowl of 100. Mm -hmm. and, and so everybody's kind of like on our team anyway has gone through this. And the, like we're all individual, right? Everybody's different. So, Jamie's got a spreadsheet 
Brennan doesn't have a spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. Brennan's got a whiteboard. Jamie kind of has a whiteboard, doesn't use I it. I can use it. It's, it's so updated. It's new, though, right? You didn't <laughs> use that when you started going. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's it's true. it's developed over time, and and, and it's individual to you, mm -hmm. rather than trying to try and okay, like let me do what so and so does. No, make that's it. It's got to be your because it's not you. It right? has to be you. So like get you. some ideas from Brennan or get some ideas from whoever, and then feel mm -hmm. like what Brooke does maybe is something or what. Yeah. Whoever, but pick something. Yeah, it's got to be your own own way of doing it. It's got to be. Yeah. It makes you comfortable, and if you're comfortable doing it, it'll be a lot easier, and people like, will see that. If I tried to like, force Brennan's system on Anna, it's not going to work. No, she's not going to feel comfortable, and then she won't do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, like, it's got to be how your system, how your schedule works, how your family, everything. Trial and error, and you don't get paid while you're in error. So yep. it's like, like oh Drew, my God, Drew does everything completely like systematized in the computer like he has yeah. like reminders that are put in like way ahead of time like he almost has no physical notes like it's all <laughs> his computer and it's all like set up to notify him to do stuff yeah whereas like i have this big book of like all these names of, like all in my terrible hand I to decide. Like, but i find like doing it in the computer it's not physical enough for me you know and it's dependent on you i like that too i like to make notes but then i yeah, I, that's why I'm like, you're like me. I'll make the note and then I'll make it. And I enjoy reading the electronic notes versus my pen and paper notes. Yeah, yeah so that's the other thing. I'll never go back and actually read it. Yeah. So your, your well, systems have to record them. Yeah, your systems have to kind of support your practice, right? Yeah. So, like Adam, who's my good mm -hmm. he's in the mortgage business, very similar business, mm -hmm. he has a tablet. I think it's a uh, iPad, and he writes on it just like you would write your note. But when he hits save, it goes automatically into his database. Oh. With different things that you can do that you could figure out, okay, this is how I want to do it, and then see what technology can do to support how I want to do it, versus trying to fit yourself into a technology that is already there. I tried to do that Adam's way. And didn't work for me. I thought it was the slickest thing ever. Mm -hmm. He actually, uh, he actually got himself a treadmill, like a little mini treadmill that he puts underneath his desk. Oh yeah, you walk right? in the box while he does his calls. Yeah. Yeah. So he does his fitness while he does his calls. He's lost yeah. fifty pounds this year. That's great. Right. That's awesome. So like all kinds of different things. You can That's door knocking. That's door knocking. That's what Tom Mitchell did for his fitness. I yeah, uh, I should that probably do that. I need to get some cardio. Yeah, yeah. Sure. It isn't the same thing, but when I, I've started doing my cold calling not in a chair anymore because I find that I'm literally just like like melting into my chair the longer I'm sitting. Yeah, sometimes like my eyes are closed. Overall, like stretch or something, just trying to like you know keep active because you, you can pick it up when somebody's like oh yeah like this, it's just like standing up and yeah. walking. Yeah. Like, I heard um, some some kind of training I had at some point would be from someone that would they had a mirror in their office and they would smile at them and just to see their expressions when they hmm. would And you so can hear happens. it in your tone. Yeah. 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 No, that's uh that's so awesome. Me, you know, you think of uh old calling like when we communicate um six percent of what brennan said we're going to remember yeah and and yep and uh so the rest of it's a lot of body language and things like that right mm -hmm. and they got that other 94 percent but when we're on the phone the only thing they have is our voice voice mm -hmm. so then you there's three things there's the tone which is your smile your your volume and your speed your cadence and so when you're when you get really good at cold calling, and you can do this at the door too, it's called matching and mirroring. Mm -hmm, you can match. You, you slow down if you're talking to a slow talker. You speed up. If you're, talk, you, you kind of mellow. If you're with a mellow person, you're energetic. And you're very, it's not about trying to fool them. Mm -hmm. It's trying to be an effective communicator to serve so them better. Yeah, so that you can serve them better. Mm -hmm. Exactly right. Yeah. So yeah. just kind of be conscious of all that while you're doing these things to. To just be a little bit more effective, and that there's 
I'm glad you brought that up because the smile thing and for Jamie to get up and walk around is huge. Because in that first second, they're deciding whether or not they're hanging up or closing the door. Mm -hmm. and, and, and if you if you just make that little Change. effort to smile or effort to have positive body language, yeah, you know, you take a step away from the door so that you're not right there. Mm -hmm. And and uh, just some simple things like that, and you'll get good at it, and it'll become natural. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But it doesn't happen with a box or repetition. Yeah, you just gotta rinse and repeat, and keep going, and just stay accountable, stay persistent. And like, how many times have you said your opening line, whether it's throwing off your cold calling in the past like two weeks? Oh my goodness, I don't know. Three hundred times. And like, and there's no way you're saying it the exact same way every time. Like, no, it's like, yeah, and all that. yeah, yeah, it's all always different. Some maybe I'll have my eyes closed when yeah, I'm saying it. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's um, one of those things where it's like, and personally, like, I have my opener, and I have like over time found a bunch of things that I can like swap in depending on like how they answer the phone. Like if they're like, "What do you want?" kind of thing. My opener goes from like a paragraph to like maybe a sentence and a half, where it's like clearly they don't want to talk to me. I'm gonna get the one thing I need out. If they're interested, I'll ask a question to keep them on the phone. But mm -hmm. I'm not trying to get hung up on halfway through a sentence, you know? Yeah, and I have like some <clears throat> some stuff that they say. Um, no, we're not looking to move, but. Okay, are you curious about the value of your home? Do you want to know what's going on in your neighborhood? Do you want to know about general market conditions? Those are three of my main ones I'll just ask. My main one is, are you interested in, in a monthly news or it talks about home prices in your area? Sure, why not? They want to know what's going on in their area. All right, I'll send you a monthly email. That worked with you and Sarah to kind of put together a flow chart. Mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Is that kind of like just having stuff on my wall or like things to say in like an emergency kind of thing like if they're like mm -hmm. giving me nothing but no's like oh yeah smart questions to ask that are just like so when though <laughs> you know what I mean? like <laughs> it's, it's a little bit smarter yeah, yeah. exactly you gotta take me out here in five bucks yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. Like, what do you say oh, that? I love that yeah yeah that's a good one that's a good one then you say uh mahogany or <laughs> yeah oak <laughs> I, I found that they really like, like, oh, I, I've heard that one a couple of times today. Here's another one for you. But then, like, giving them another option to say, yeah, then pine box, like, oh, they'll have to take me feet first and stuff yeah. like that. Like, uh, I don't know. Just, I find that, like, gets a little bit more relatable because they're kind of telling you to screw off. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm here. Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, I also say, if you were to move, where would you go? That's another one I would like to say. But it's usually just the main one. Then I use that with command in the smart plan. So, and it's very simple, very easy. I think um, the guys who do that, and you probably have hearing it today, is that they're conversationalists. You know, it, and people, people, once they get past that, I want instinct to say no or hang up on you or whatever. Like just a conversation starter, like what? Well, it sounds like you've lived there for a long time. What have you noticed change in your neighborhood since you moved? Mm -hmm. How long have you yeah. been there? And then they, and they, then, they and it's speak just like up. All of a sudden, I'm not interested in selling. Now they're talking about their neighborhood and how much it's changed. And, yeah. You know? And they, people love talking about themselves, right? Yeah. So it's just the way they keep them like falling. Yeah, I really know. It's really good. With COVID, and I know that we're post COVID and things are open up, but still, people, if you're nice, People will want to have a conversation with you. Actually, you have to stop them because you realize you're going nowhere. Yeah, yeah I've been on a okay. Like, I've been on a cold call for over an hour with one person. I I at one point I was on a cold call and I left. The, I started the call, packed up all my stuff, left, went all the way to theirs, and finished the call on my way in to go grocery shopping. <laughs> And the whole time I was like, okay, yeah, all yeah. right. Like, and it's so hard, it's so hard to get off. Yeah. 
Oh, it didn't help with like, yeah. like Christmas too. So it was like, oh, okay, yeah. That's a good resource for you. We should have joined that church. Well, the thing, thing I was like, I have family planning. Like, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. all big, yeah. But that was a, uh, another thing that we talked about there is like, that's another way to get referrals. Like, if you have, you know, um, Sarah has kids in school and then like, she yeah. goes to school wearing your jacket or like even in sports and like, yeah. you know but it doesn't have to be sponsoring your kids team it could literally just be showing up in the stands and gossip yeah. Yeah. Oh, right like yeah. it's, it's, you know just depends yeah. on what works for you. whenever i go over to my friend's house the first thing i get is hi brennan how's the market and their parents their I parents are in every time every yeah. single time oh, yeah. every single time how's the market brennan so yeah, that's great. people love to talk about real estate yeah. they really do yeah so but yeah, no, I mean, if you guys don't have any other questions, so, so. I would say the only thing I would say to you guys is like, if you want to see Brandon make a phone call, you just ask him when he's making his phone calls come and sit with him for 15 or 20 minutes. Yeah. If you want to go cold door knocking, yeah. ask him when he's door knocking next mm -hmm. and go on the other side of the street. Like, yep. that's what makes Keller Williams different mm -hmm. is that you can, it doesn't matter, you know. Mm -hmm. Because we need more Keller Williams signs on on, on front mm -hmm. lawns. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, you can just listen to me be a robot for an hour if you want. I bet you he'll pick up something from you too. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like we. I like learning. I like learning a lot. So. Awesome. Thank you very much. No problem. Hopefully, you guys maybe learned something.